Hello, my name is Ryan. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we are gonna be talking about differential performance in RC vehicles. Now, when we talk about the performance of these differentials, we are talking about the different performances that we can actually achieve based on changing our differential fluids. So we talk about the differential. There are typically three differentials in a radio controlled vehicle. You will typically find one at the front, at the center and the rear. This does imply that the radio controlled vehicle is a four wheel drive vehicle, meaning all the power from the motor transmits to all four tires or at least has the potential to. We'll first identify the differential that we're talking about. When we're talking about differentials, we are talking about the gear type, the bevel gear type. They're typically known as spider gears that are the internal workings of our differential. That is exactly what allows power to be transmitted when it needs to. Now the problem with these differentials is they are known as an open type. Even if you were to compare these differentials with our full size cars, an open differential does have to abide by the law of physics that says that power transmitted through this drivetrain, when it gets to that differential, the power is gonna take the path of least resistance. So really what that tells us is that when we are driving our radio control vehicles and we have one tire that has a very good amount of traction and we have another tire that has very little amount of traction, all that power is gonna be transmitted through that, that tire that has the least amount of traction. And of course, that's when we're gonna be pinning it, you know, full throttle. All that power goes right to that tire, and that's exactly what we don't want to have happen. So this is where we need to dial in our, our setups and make sure that we have the best setup to operate based on our preferences. So the way we're gonna look at this is we're gonna break down the differentials, you know, section by section. We'll start at the front, look at the mid, then look at the rear, and then look at what the best setup may look like and we'll go from there. So the front differential, if we were to look at differential oils, we could first talk about the oils and how they work. Oils are typically in ratings from anywhere from you know the low thousands all the way up to uh, several hundred thousand. If we look at a fluid that has a rating or weighting closer to the 3000 mark, that's gonna be one that is gonna be lighter. It's going to want to run, it's a little more viscous. When we look at a fluid that has a weighting closer to 50,000, for example, that's gonna be a heavier weighting. It's gonna be thicker. So remember this, the 3,000 one is gonna be lighter. It's gonna be thinner. It wants to run more. The 50,000 weight is gonna be thicker. It's going to also be heavier. These are the terms that are associated with them typically. So when we want to prevent the differential from all the power going to the one, the tire that has the least amount of traction, we are gonna increase the weight of that specific oil. Then we need to learn what that does to the power system. So we we're talking about the front differential first. When we want to have, for example, more power coming out of the corner, that's when we want to go with a heavier setup. We wanna put a heavier weight oil into our front differential. This way, when we come out of that corner and we will apply a lot of power, we're gonna get both wheels that are gonna you know, bite really hard. And that's gonna give us that excellent out of the corner power. Now, if we want better steering going into the corner, so that means you know when you're entering that corner, you want the steering to feel really good, you will want a lighter setup. You will want a lighter differential fluid in that front differential. This is gonna allow the tires to adjust to the different speeds. That's the most important thing when we're talking about the bias between the left and the right hand side, so our front and rear differentials. When we end up going into the corner, we wanna make sure that the inside wheel is able to travel a shorter distance and the outside wheel is able to travel a larger distance. That means that there needs to be a change in speed. So those change in speeds is what makes us have a little bit more control when we're entering that corner. Therefore, a lighter fluid is going to give us that. Now, of course, you're gonna find this is all a big trade-off. If you go with that setup, you're not gonna have that good on power delivery out of the corner. So you have to try and find the balance that you're specifically looking for. So if we move over into the center differential, this is one of my most favorite differentials to actually you know, be able to, to adjust and dial in. And the reason for that is because it really you know, controls our acceleration performance. I like to look at the center differential as the straight line acceleration parameter. So when we want that really good acceleration, we want to put a, 
a heavier fluid into the center differential. Now the way this works, you have to think about it in terms of what are you doing to the power. This way you can take what you learn here and apply it to your own setup. So if we're thickening up that center differential, that means we're gonna send power in both directions. So that's now towards the front and towards the rear it's gonna be a little bit more equal. So if we're sending more power to the rear, that rear can then get a little loose if we're accelerating hard. So it really depends on the amount of traction that you have on the surface that you plan to run. If you have a really good amount of traction available like you're on road, then you're gonna want a heavier weighting in that center differential. If you're running on a very loose traction type field, then you're gonna want a lighter differential fluid. And this really all kind of sinks down into your personal preference yet again. This is what it's gonna be if through all of what we talk about today. And it also kind of touches on the aspect of if you have the necessary control. So if you have a heavier weight fluid in all of these situations, you may need to have better control. For example, the center differential. If I pin the throttle when I have a heavy weight fluid in there, I'm gonna need to have control to be able to lighten up if it gets a little loose on the rear end. Now, if you find that you want to have more front wheel traction than rear wheel traction, you'll want to go with a setup that has a lighter center differential fluid in it. This way, you're gonna have the front wheels pull the vehicle rather than the rear wheels try and push the vehicle. So really, it, yeah, it's, it's all a, a balance game of what you want to do here in terms of your performance. Now when we look at the rear differential, it's very similar here. So if we have a heavier weight in the rear, that means we're going to send power to both of those rear tires. Now if you're accelerating hard and you're trying to go around a corner and you have a heavy fluid, you're going to have it in such a way where if you break loose, that car is going to want to shift out to the side. The tail is going to want to swing out on you and it's gonna be difficult to control unless you're you know, very experienced and, and that's your, your style. So if you want that good on power acceleration, you'll wanna have both those tires grip nice and hard. If you want the control, you'll wanna be a little bit lighter in differential fluid. So it really works very similar between the front, the center and the rear differentials. The biggest thing to kinda of take from this is that you understand what the differential's doing. So if the differential has a heavier fluid, you're gonna get both of those outputs from the differential matching a little closer. That's gonna prevent in a turn that nice control, but it will give you that excellent acceleration out of the corner. If you don't have that heavy fluid when you're trying to accelerate hard out of a corner, all the power is gonna to go to that tire with the least amount of resistance, in which case it might only give you one wheel peel all the way out of that corner. And that's what you want to avoid if you're heavy on the throttle out of the corners. Now, at the same time, how do you know what is the best setup for you? Well, there is a setup that we can start with. It's gonna be, you know, working for buggies as well as on-road cars and truggies and all the other vehicles out there. And it, it's kind of like a general setup that'll get you started. So no, this is not the final setup that you're gonna probably live with, but if you're looking for somewhere to start and you don't know, this is what you can go with. You can go with a 5,000 weighting in the front differential. You can go with like a seven or 8,000 weight in the center differential. And then at the rear differential, I would prefer to stick with a 3,000 weighting in the rear. Having a lighter rear end is going to make it a little bit easier to control. Any heavier than the 3,000, you have to have the experience in order to handle the difference in performance. Yes, you'll get better acceleration, but only if you're able to control that power. So it's the same with everything. If you go and you know, have a center differential and you wanna bump all these weightings up from where we start, you're gonna to have to have the control. The only area where I don't see needing as much control is on the front differential. You can get away with a pretty heavy weighting on the front end, um, at least from my experience. It's probably you know my personal preference coming in there, but you know that's, that's my opinion. The key to this differential performance and dialing it into the best setup that you possibly can get is based on trial and error. You need to find a setup that works for you. Start off with the recommended setup that we just covered and then dial it in from there. If you feel like you're having issues with certain areas of your road course or track, then you could dial in the performance of that specific differential that'll help control that. Once you've identified what controls what on the track, then you can kind of adjust the differentials from there. So there you have it. Those are the effects of differential fluid for our differentials. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.